All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, this is Kneecap, and we're so glad to have the the band Kneecap and hello, hello. and, and hey, have, have you here at Sundance. Um, first of all, this was the the first sale out of Sundance. I mean, what what was it like being here and kind of taking Sundance by storm right out of the gate? No, you go this. I always go first. Uh, I always director. go first. I'm a director. <laughs> so. um, felt, yeah, we weren't exact, we had no expectations. With the movie, it's hard to know when you're in a movie how it's going to do. Obviously, we love the movie ourselves and we thought it was great. But uh, just our like. Our opinion doesn't matter, though. Our opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> just know. like when we started the band, we didn't ever think there was a market for hip hop in the Irish language because it has never been done before. Same with the movie. I didn't, we never thought there'd be a market for a movie of this type, which is mostly in Irish. But again, we were wrong twice. So, um, and that's we got, not very often. And that's not very often. <laughs> so we got signed by Sony, and I think we're all getting a PlayStation each. <laughs> a what, a PlayStation? Apparently, the president of Sony promised me a PlayStation. There you go. PlayStation 1. <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> it's, not, it's not stretching to a new one. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, this movie is its so funny, it's entertaining, but it's also so tied to the culture and politics and everything and your sense of rebellion. How did this idea come about to really make your stamp in this way with a, a music biopic? No, that's definitely a question for you. Um, look, I mean, kneecap are um, musicians that have always had a really political and socially conscious thread to them. Um, and, you know, it, it was never going to be a straightforward biopic. You know, first of all, when we started this film, you know, these these boys weren't signed. You know what I mean? They were they were an, an Irish band who, who were, you know, were very popular in Ireland. But beyond that, you know, we were still growing. They were, they were very much in the the, first, the infancy of their careers. And they still they still are. Do you know what I mean? And so a biopic tends to look back at a whole career, right? Well, we were looking for a small area. So it was always going to be something that was talking about more than just music and was always about more than just music because, you know, we live in a place that um, politics is, is so um, entrenched in everything, right? Yeah. That it, it, it's, it's, you know, not a generation ago, it was a society in conflict. And, you know, the generation uh, that these guys are part of the first sort of post troubles generation, the ceasefire babies as we call them, and they've got something different to say. And their voice, the voice of young people in the north of Ireland, is often drowned out by um, the loudness of, of, of p p politicians who've got all access people, to all people. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and, and you know, they represent why they're so popular in Ireland is because they represent a new, hopeful, positive voice in the place. And I mean, although how much of this is really true to your story and I, would people be surprised to know just how much, you know, there's a lot of truth that there is in this movie? A lot of the maddest stuff's true. <laughs> that's that's what that's what I say. I mean, look, I, I think it ruins the fun a bit to, to kind of, you know, define exactly what's true what's not i like to look, think about fargo and the cohen brothers you know every word in this every word in this uh, film is true and not a bloody word of it was because ultimately we're creating a piece of entertainment and, and that's the most thing is we want people to be entertained we want people to go and enjoy it and they can come out and go i wonder if that was true i wonder if it's not there's lots of hints in there and if they you know look the boys up afterwards they can kind of work out what's true and what's not and when you see the end credits of the film we go into archive footage and you can kind of see you know the real life journey of them and I mean, at the end of the movie, you're on stage and you're criticizing that that um, that oh, we've been politicizing the Irish language. But I feel like that's something that's been very true to your career and upbringing. I mean, can you talk about that, including being specific in that way, and, and including that as the part of the theme of the film, but really what you guys stand for? Um, I think they like to, they like to put uh, the responsibility on us for politicizing the language. Whereas uh, 800 years ago, when they colonized Ireland and tried to eradicate the language, that was the start of the politicization of the language for us. And uh, in Belfast, we all just speak Irish together. We're not talking about politics. We're having the crack. We're having drinking pints and taking MDMA and speaking Irish. For us, it's not a massive political act. It's just a day-to-day -day way of life for us. And uh, they like to make it out that speaking Irish is this crazy political act and that's kind of trying to drown out other uh, identities on the island of Ireland. But uh, we just try to normalise that there's young people in Ireland who speak Irish just for the sake of speaking Irish because it's central to the Irish identity and having fun and connection. Yeah, like speaking Irish 
Like, I mean, they say it's it's political because we speak Irish in Belfast, a place that's still under British rule. But if you go to places like Donegal and Connemara in Ireland, like there's people there who have lived there for thousands of years that still speak Irish and still fish and whatever, survive through a language. But we're on the same island speaking the same language, but yet up north it's political and down south it isn't. And this is Sundance's first movie that's in Irish, as I understand it. I mean, what does that mean for you to, to be here with this film you know, speaking your language? I think uh, for a long time, obviously, with the history of Ireland and the history of colonization in Ireland, I think you lose a bit of confidence in your native language and your culture over the years of having, being downtrodden and being disrespected with, with the language. So moments like this here and having the language of Sundance, I think really brings a lot of confidence to people of Ireland that the language is on the same level and the same power of any other language in the world. And it's the same with this movie as what the ethos that we have for our music as well, that um, a lot of people think things are cool just because they're in Irish, but we want to have them at high qualities as well. We don't want to be just we sort of the token Irish speakers that are like, you know, just cool because they speak Irish. We want to actually be coming with high quality music and I was going to say a high quality director, but <laughs> but a high quality movie exactly. too. Like that's what we strive for. We don't, we, we don't, um, yeah, we just strive for the best we can. Okay, and you guys are serious actors. I mean, this is really well done and for acting debuts, correct? Like for all of yeah, you? Yeah. I mean, you're playing uh, a teacher, a music teacher who's, you know, uh, you know, trying to, a little nervous, a little, you know, but coming out of his skin. Uh, um, talk about that role and embodying it. And how did you find those acting chops? And that was a true story. Yeah, I was actually, I was a teacher, yeah. hence wearing a balaclava. I had to have a thing called a plausible deniability. So whenever the students started coming to the gigs, whenever we started out, and I was uh, working in a, a Catholic grammar school that was a convent, like nuns, would have ran it back in the day and uh, they thought that I was bringing the school into disrepute. So I was asked extensively about my uh, activities in kneecap and I denied it. And then they went and did a lot of research That's to find out. tell them about it. <laughs> so, yeah. And this is a school. Admitted, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> admitted. This is the reason I had to wear the balaclava at the start so that I would have anonymity. And then people started coming to the gigs and the students and they were shouting up, sir. Or, JJ. And I'd be like, fuck, they're here. And this then... is a school run by nuns, you know, like Catholic nuns and Christian brothers. And they had to go through all our archive footage and all the YouTube videos. And they kind of like, they see his ass in one of the videos and they're like, that's definitely his ass. Yeah, my, my ass is out a lot. It's very plump. And it's got Brits out written on it as well. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you actually pause the film at that point, uh, you can have, you can have a lovely wank. <laughs> Jesus. What? You have a lovely wank. But I mean, <laughs> how did you, Rich, how did you work with them and really, you know, get these performances out of them? Look, we did, we did uh, six months of acting classes was the starting point, you know, and, and really, you know, we threw ourselves into, three's an awkward number for an acting class, right? Um, so I ended up just kind of doing the acting course with them. So we kind of had an even number. And uh, I think that was kind of, in hindsight, one of the best things we did, because, you know, it was kind of a bonding experience, wasn't it? You know, kind bondage of the exercise. Experience. Of, what? Bondage experience. A bondage experience. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the uh, so six months of that, a guy called Kieran Lagan is an amazing acting coach out of Belfast. Uh, and yeah, it, it kind of got us all on the same level that when we got onto set, we had that shared language. We had kind of a, something we could access together to kind of just talk about what we needed to do. And look, we threw ourselves in. These boys work bloody hard, right? And, and when they commit to something, <laughs> they, 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 they commit to it the same way I do. And, you know, I think a lot of people thought that you know, at the beginning, perhaps it was going to be some, I don't know, kind of, Shit yeah, just a, it kind of, it was just going to, the whole thing was going to be a bit of a nightmare and the film was just going to be a bit whatever. And, and I think we surprised a lot of people how serious we took it and, and you know, the, what, what our aspirations for the film were. And I think, you know, we can probably say that uh, sitting here now that we did all right. Credit where credit's due. I mean, he fought on our behalf because like, it's hard to get funding off, you know, any kind of company for a movie, but especially a movie about three people who have never acted before. So there was a, a lot of backlash and people wanting videos of us acting, but he refused. So that was a tense first day of shooting. And there was 70 or 80 crew all biting their nails all morning. 
but obviously we're stars. And obviously things got serious maybe once Michael Fassbender came came along. He must be a fan. And how did you get him involved? And you know how did that change this project? He was begging us to come to come <laughs> on the board. Uh, he well, actually he rang us crying. <laughs> Please, can I be a part of this movie? It didn't actually get that serious. It got a lot less serious because you know he's very chill and he brought a lot of crack to the crew and we had a lot of fun. We went out to the pub and all. So he actually made the environment a lot more rela relaxing for us because the whole crew were up the high and stressed out because they were freaking out in case we couldn't act. And Michael Fassbender brought up a sense of calm to all the scenes. I think there's a there's a fun scene where you're in claymation. You're all you know tripping out and you're taking a swipe at uh like streaming services you know talk about that scene or why why you wanted to include that that little jab in there at like well, it was a, a, like a really like niche sort of really stop motion niche. extremely niche uh, like a stop motion thing that like a lot of people our friends or whatever like bonded a lot over like one of our managers and stuff like this is how our friendship grown was over this like it was like a six part five minute it's, it's ridiculous, it's hard to explain, but it's about, it's called Pulling the Devil by the Tail, and it's by this guy called Stephen McCollum, and it's just like old Irish folk stories told in a real like dramatic, like comedic claymation story. And we just thought maybe it would be a great idea to like, for one of the drug scenes, because we were, we didn't want every drug scene to be the same. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of them. One of the one of the producers hated the idea of this claymation so much. I had to pay Name for it shame. myself. <laughs> but to this day, I had to pay for that scene out myself. It was that hated, um, and I was like, "That nah, it will work." Can we please start a go fund me for this copy here? That was my defiance of it. I was like, "Right, okay, fine, I'll pay for it." Right, um, and you guys this week were at uh, Sundance's. Palestine protests, um, you know, talk about being there for, for that and why, why you wanted to, um, you know, raise your voice on, on, that, on that subject. Well, I mean, we have a platform that we can use, hopefully, to spread awareness for what's going on in Palestine. I think when the news cycle changes every week, that sometimes you can forget that Palestine is still being bombarded with bombs and people on the streets and homeless and people are being displaced. So we just wanted to do the little bit that we can do to keep people aware of this and to keep pressure on the American government and all these people who are funding the Israeli and the IDF. So I think, you know, I don't think, uh, sometimes you feel a bit helpless when you're watching the news, etc. but we want to just show solidarity to Palestine because we know in Ireland how it feels to be labeled as a terrorist and how, is that, how that is used as a weapon to wipe out the people. So, I mean, yeah, I will mean, see we're big supporters of Palestine and hopefully one day there'll be a ceasefire soon. I don't take it to ask him for much for a ceasefire. You know what I mean? They're not asking for much more right now. I mean, what last, Jesus, it's been a week from I've heard anything because I've been over here, but last I heard was over 30,000 people dead. We had a 30 year war up north and there was less than 4,000 people killed. And it was traumatic still for the people that live there. Mm -hmm. So imagine in two months, or two, two months yeah, it's been, or three months maybe, months. and there's 30,000 dead. It's, it's frightening.